One recent and exciting example is India and their national supercomputing mission. And with me here today, I'm very happy to say, is Dr. Hamant Darbari. He came all the way from India to join us, and he's a founding member and the executive director of the Center for De uh, Development of Advanced Computing, or CDAC, which is an institution set up by the government of India to carry out advanced research in new and emerging technology domains. Uh, Dr. Darbari, Darbari is a recipient of the Computer World Smithsonian Award Medal, as well as the Waswick Award for his contributions to the information and communication technology world. So, Dr. Darbari. It's a pleasure. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. So let's start by, by explaining the role that CDAC plays in, in India's overall investment into high performance computing. You can give us a little insight into what you're doing. Yeah, India started its journey in HPC in 1988 and delivered first supercomputer, which was called Param, which was one gigaflop machine in 1991. It continued to invest in HPC and deliver Param series of supercomputer. Today, we have several petascale machines in India. And looking to the future requirements of gov the government of India has sanctioned HPC, a, pro a project which is called NSM. The NSM addresses creation of next generation su uh, supercomputers, the, the petascale systems, which is going to be 100 petaflop type of range, to total aggregated application development, skilled manpower development, and address the research towards exascale computing. CDAC is the nodal agency who is working onto this goal, and ISC, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, is also working with us. Yes, it's a big undertaking. So sitting here in the US, we certainly see the worldwide investment that's being made in, in HPC. So as one is, of the countries that are making that big investment, maybe you can tell us a little bit of why it is so important to India, why you are investing at such a high level. Yeah, India is strongly believing that innovation is going to be the need of the day. For example, 10,000 human lives were lost in 1999 cyclone in India. Last year, a similar intensity cyclone came, and the life loss was just 124. This was possible because of the accurate weather prediction using petascale scale systems. And early prediction helped disaster management and the team to move around 700,000 people out of the place. The fishermen were brought back from the sea. And that was a major success of yeah. HPC. Major success. But Digital India is another area on which government of India is giving a large push. And we are working on smart cities, smart governance, the IoT, the digital libraries. And all these things can, uh, can really lead to success if we take the HPC on a right track. A successful knowledge economy India is investing in training the manpower in a big way, and we are going to train tens of thousands of HPC skilled manpower. And that is why India matters. HPC matters a lot in India. India. Yeah, so the, um, how do you see then these, H, your cyclone uh, example was a compelling one, but how do you see these HPC investments overall then helping to solve some of the most difficult challenges that you face in India? Yeah, I think that India is a, agriculture dominant country, and the economy depends on that. So the weather services to the farmers, the disaster management using HPC is one of the area. Then HPC, we have to design, a lot of uh, simulation has to become. Now this is simulation for the space launch vehicle, which has come up, for the moon mission, or the Mars mission, when the prediction was done that when the exact time should be there that Param was used for that. So that is one area. Now the second major area is deep learning and HPC applied sciences, wherein the information extraction, the decision making, and the translation, which is going to be playing a major role in throughout the world because the communication becomes very important, the HPC is going to be, play a major role in there also. 
So we are working on some projects in which the machine translation is done by the system, mm -hmm. and uh, the such, one such system is running in the parliament with 95% accuracy. Wow. India cannot imagine life without this SPC. And with the inroads in every sector, the oil and gas exploration, space, health, life science, product design development, so those areas very we are pervasive. going to be there. Yeah, very pervasive. So then my last question is, you look to the future, um, what do you need in order to be successful? You've got a wonderful audience here of, of talent and expertise. What, what does India need in order to make this work? Yeah, our first challenge is going to be the development of a scalable, applications which can address India's specific problems. An efficient, complete hardware and software integration and the environments which are required to be built, that is one. Then training the people to use this environment and take it to the next level. Similarly, the, uh, the operational cost is going to be the major challenge because the mass deployment when we are talking of, we require that the operational cost of the system should be low and creation of human capital. That's what exactly we are looking forward to. Lots of things you need. Well, so it's wonderful talking to you, and best to you on your journey. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming. Thanks a lot.